Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hi, I'm Abby, and welcome to this episode of Oxford from the Inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Today we are joined by Becca. Would you like to introduce yourself, Becca? Uh, hello, I'm Becca. I study Earth Sciences at University College. Perfect, and welcome to the show. It's honestly such a pleasure to have you with us. Um, and today we'll actually be talking about what interviews are like for Earth Sciences. So, let's start it off with a cracker of a question, shall we? So, <laughs> on a whole, how did you find your interview experience then, Becca? Um, I found it really good, actually. I think I'm one of the rare people who actually quite enjoyed my um, interview experience. So, I went for interview in 2018, and um, I stayed in University College. So I, I applied for University College, and I um, stayed there for three days in total, um, and had two interviews, and it all went quite well and the college are really welcoming so I really enjoyed it. That's so good it's so nice to hear that like the whole experience the experience as like a whole rather than just like the actual interview process was like quite enjoyable um, and I suppose like it's, it's it's mixing with the people that you're there during the interview and like you know the food that the college gives you and being able to just like experience Oxford it's just like it's like a really nice part of the interviews um, <laughs> on like not very similar to you but like my interview my interviews were actually terrible but <laughs> we'll get to that <laughs> so um okay yeah so in terms of like earth sciences then how many interviews did you have and sort of how were they conducted yeah so i had two interviews in total and the way that earth sciences works because it's quite a small course um they actually do all their interviews in department rather than in colleges so um it is quite different. Like, I think most other subjects tend to do their interviews in colleges and then you might have to move around to different colleges. Whereas with us, it was all done in department and it was everyone had two interviews. Like no one had one, no one had more than two. It was all everyone had two. So um, I had one on the Monday and one on the Tuesday. So one per day. And um, I think I was given like a time to arrive to the department by and they like, like someone walked me there so that I didn't get lost or anything. And then when I got there, they were like student helpers then took me up to the right like room and all that. And there was a bit of an anxious wait beforehand because I think they were running a bit behind. So you kind of sit outside for like 10, 20 minutes, sort of twiddling your thumbs a bit. But um, it was it was OK. And then as you go in, you're there. Yeah. When I went in, there were two um uh, uh, like interview interviewers there and um that was the same for both of them they just introduced themselves and then we did the interview so yeah sounds pretty classical oxford doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i can confirm like it was exactly the same for me so yeah two interviews you get taken into department you get led exactly where you need to be um did you ever feel like did you feel like nervous upon arrival in the building where you did you did you feel like you were going to get lost at all um, I'm, no, I didn't feel like I was going to get lost. That was one thing. I definitely felt like I was going in the right place. They had so many like helpers there and everything. So that was really good. That's one thing you don't have to worry about. But you are, you definitely do feel anxious. I don't think there's anyone there. If you didn't feel anxious, then yeah, I don't believe you because um, it is a very scary experience. Especially, I mean, I had been to the department before for like um, an open day and things, but like this was the first time I'd been up into like where all like the offices are and everything. And it is quite daunting when you see all these like posters all these research projects that are happening in department and um it all does feel very like serious and um quite nerve-wracking but then as soon as you join you realize they're all lovely people and it's not scary at all so yeah yeah I mean like you know I, I always say this like the tutors seem to sort of I don't know take on a more sort of stern approach during interviews yeah. I think maybe it's to like it's just to really just to make you see like what how you act under like a high pressure environment which is like just oxford so <laughs> um but yeah no and but they are absolutely they are so lovely so like don't think that these people are absolutely horrible if you get a place after your interviews don't think oh my gosh like i'm, I'm gonna hate it all the people are horrible like they're absolutely lovely we've got such a great department okay so get into the juicy bits of it now so you're mm -hmm. in the interview room you're looking at the two interviewers okay what sorts of questions then like were you asked or like in general do they ask in earth sciences okay so earth sciences um i didn't really know too much before going at first of all like i um at my school didn't have any sort of like 
much in terms of interview prep or anything like that I think I had like a couple of practice interviews with uh, my geography teacher and that was it so um, I didn't really have much of an idea of what to expect um, I think I looked online and they have quite a, I think I found some like questions online which they often ask and they're these sort of what we call like Fermi questions in the sense that they um, give you a question like oh how would you work out the mass of the atmosphere and um, it sounds really daunting when you think oh god I've no idea how to answer that but um, it's basically just like making approximations and just like problem solving your way through it and there's quite a lot of examples online on like how to do that and um, yeah and to be honest the interviews kind of followed that sort of um, like path I guess uh, my interviews were very like focused on what I'd studied at A level so I think I don't know if this is like actually true but from what I've gathered is that they tend to look at what A levels you've done and like aim your interviews around that so a lot of my questions were very physics based because I'd done physics A level but I hadn't done chemistry whereas I think you Abby had more chemistry questions I think I don't know so um yeah it kind of depends but um my first one was very like geophysics I think they gave me like a map of like the bathymetry of like the ocean floor and it was like um using like speed equals distance divided by time to sort of work out the depths and things like that and they just sort of like carried like they helped me out with a few bits like it was sort of like going through the question gradually and then going through the problem and then I think at the end I had to like draw a graph or something like that but um they like help you through it it's not just like they give you one question and like wait for half an hour for you to answer it it's it's very like gradual when you sort of like guide you through the questions yeah definitely um I think it, that's that's a good point to note that like in terms of your a levels they will well specifically for earth sciences anyway like they cater your interviews to what you've done at a level and then they'll kind of push you out of your comfort zone by then maybe mixing it in. so like i did i did biology chemistry maths and physics and what what they did is they basically mixed in geology stuff to try and push me push me out of my comfort zone to get me thinking um but it's it's never going to be anything which is like outrageously different from anything you've seen before um, and also just like you mentioned how they ask like different Fermi questions like what's the mass of the atmosphere or whatever and um, this is like something if you're going in for like any MPLS um, subject so mathematical physical or life sciences like subject and um, it's really good to be able to like answer Fermi questions because these are the types of things that come up in the interviews all the time so yeah get working on them <laughs> so Becca <laughs> what what then during your interview did you wear was there like a sort of dress code that was required or could you just rock up in your pjs <laughs> um so i'd heard sort of mixed things i guess that i was one of them people who tried to like find out as much as possible about the interviews either like through youtube or whatever i could find trying to work out what they were going to be like because i was quite anxious about them and i'd heard stories of people turning up in suits and like full-on like work like wear and things like that and i was like Mm, I don't don't know if I want to do that and then equally obviously you got to make a good first impression as well so like I wouldn't have turned up in like track suits or something like that um I think I wore just like a skirt and tights and then like a nice like sweater or something like that um so it was like form like formal ish but it wasn't like dressed like I, it was sort of formal casual sort of wear but like obviously like modest and everything like you don't want to turn up in like a ridiculously short skirt and anything like that but basically anything which you'd wear and like feel comfortable meeting an interviewer who like is going to admit you into this university or not so yeah I think just sensible is probably the best. Yeah I'll second that I just think you should probably pick something which you're comfortable in but is also sort of smart casual um because like you want to make like you said you want to make a good impression to the people who could potentially be your actual tutor um and it's normally in the case when you're interviewing with your science with your sciences you will probably interview with one person who will end up being your tutor so like it's quite good to like try and make a good first impression um but yeah don't stress too much about um what you need to wear um, don't go out and buy like spend loads of money on like the perfect outfit especially because like interviews um in 2020 um yeah 2020 will be um online as well so um just buy like a nice blouse or a nice jumper and you could literally wear your tracksuit bottoms whilst you're doing your online interviews so um mm -hmm. yeah that's the beauty about them <laughs> so um as like a little side thing then do you have like any advice that you would like for like prospective students of like things you wouldn't do during the interviews are there things that you would like try to sort of almost avoid if you're in the interviews um 
I guess one of the big things which I think maybe not what not to do but what you should definitely bear in mind is that to listen to what they're saying so I know I'm guilty of this when I'm like quite nervous um and in like quite an anxious situation I'll sort of just glaze over and people will be talking at me and I'll be like oh my god I'm so scared like um and not actually taking what they're saying so I think it's really important just to take a breath and just like sit down and just be very present in like that room and in that conversation and listen to what they're saying and like smile and like this is a bit obviously going to be a bit different if it's going to be online interviews this year but um like just going in and shaking their hand and like making an effort to say hi like um nice to meet you and things like that um and you can do that over online interviews like say hi how are you like nice to meet you just giving that good like first impression that you're like enthusiastic to be there um be crude like don't be the person who goes overboard either like make sure you listen to what they say and be polite and give them the opportunity to talk to you don't like come across too over enthusiastic because that can also put people off so I think just finding that good balance of being polite and then like listening to what they're saying and like a bit smiley and yeah I think that's most important yeah I'll agree with that um just it's it's about sort of giving the tutor like respect so that they'll return it back to you that's I mean like that's that's like applies to all walks of life and especially the interviews as well um, and I think another thing to, I think to sort of go into the interview with like a certain approach is to be, is to not give off an air of arrogance. Like, and I know like most people in this situation, they will not be arrogant. Like they'll be, you know, they'll be nervous. They'll be anxious. They'll just be like, just probably just wanting to get the interviews over. Um, but yeah, because I think arrogance is something that interviewers and tutors are quite um, keenly linked into and they can see it quite like quite well in students so you know they've been interviewing students for years so try not be arrogant and also oh my gosh if you're asked a question do not just sit there in silence you can you can take a you can take a minute you can be like hmm, let me like just give me a minute maybe pick up a glass of water take a sip or whatever but like don't sit there in silence um and then just be like i don't know you've got to try and show a sort of thought process and even if even if you're completely and utterly stuck just be like look um this is what it, I think it could potentially be. And then if it's completely along the wrong lines, then the, the tutor should be like, okay, that's a, it's a nice thought, but actually you could go about it like this. And then they'll start like prompting you to do something. So yeah, never just sit there in silence. <laughs> yeah, that's, so. that's, actually, that's really important actually, because I think in my second interview, uh, one thing I didn't say earlier actually was that um, one of the like, um, things that they always do in an earth science interview, you will always be given uh, a specimen like a rock specimen yeah. you've never done geology before like I had never done geology before um, and they will give you that and honestly they gave it to me and like I was like I don't know anything really about geology I don't really know what to say and it was I was like oh, I'm not really sure and they're like well what color is it what does it look like like just describe it and it is literally just like name the color name the shapes of the like grains within yeah. it and things like that um, so it is really like if they ask you a question you don't know just say you don't know and they are quite happy to um like prompt you as Abby said and um yeah it would be good <laughs> <laughs> no definitely like and, and also like don't think that if they're giving you lots of prompts that that's a negative if anything they're just trying to see if you can if they can really push you out of your comfort zone to try and really like make you think outside the box so yeah don't think that that's a negative definitely don't okay so um like did you have like a good prior knowledge of the degree before you went to interview so you said like obviously they gave you like rock samples and they asked you sort of like rocks no <laughs> they asked you rocks they asked you questions in the context of earth sciences <laughs> um, um but like did you have like a good prior knowledge like were there any like bits of reading that you should have done or like any things that you would recommend well, I think the the thing with earth science is that it is a very broad degree and it is one of them ones where like if you've done physics and chemistry, obviously there's aspects of that that will apply to the course. But if unless you've done geology, um, there isn't much of earth science that you've probably done before. Like you've probably done aspects of it, but not in the context of geology. So um, obviously, whatever you write in your personal statement, if you said that you read something, if you said that you, you focused on like a certain aspect of something, then they're obviously going to probably ask you questions or something like that like I think in my personal statement because obviously I've done I've done physics so like I wrote quite a lot about like seismology and things like that and I kind of got quite a lot of questions based on the maths and physics behind that so um I think it's just almost like you get to decide what you want to answer in the sense that if you wrote if you said that you know it then it 
then expect to be asked questions on it and like and obviously it doesn't they don't expect you to get them all right like it's not saying that if you've written about it you meant to know all the answers that's not true at all but um expect that, that like they're gonna at least want to see whether you've told the truth in your personal statements so but like other than that I think because earth sciences is one of them subjects where you probably haven't done much of it before it will be all very new and that's okay like if you don't know that's absolutely fine they'll help you along the way definitely yeah like it's 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 quite I'd say a niche degree um, and it's the beauty is that it is such a like a multidisciplinary degree so you really are getting all aspects of the sciences um, so yeah don't feel like you know you're going to be really out of place if you haven't done like a particular science like because it really does mix them all together well um, and they will account for that in the uh, interviews as well so as like a general like overview of Oxford then um, did, like did you ever hear like any sort of weird or wacky sort of myths about interviews before you came to Oxford for your interviews? <laughs> um, I don't think so, more because I kind of came from a school which didn't have many Oxbridge like candidates so it wasn't really like something that was spoken about much like between year groups in my school um, so I didn't really have obviously I had the, like the stereotypes of Oxford in my head of it being like really difficult and like really like, time-consuming work-wise and you don't have much fun which is all not true at all um, but other than that, I think I was just kind of expect, I think I was kind of just expecting like to walk into a very old room and be asked questions by very old people, but that wasn't the case at all. Like, I think most of my, well, apart from Joe Cartwright, I think most of my interviewers <laughs> are quite young. So, um, so yeah, I think um, it, them sort of misword dispelled because I was in a modern building and I was being asked questions by quite young like um, tutors and things like that. So for earth science at least I can say that um that idea of it being very old and traditional wasn't really fulfilled but again for other subjects that could still be the case obviously I'm not too sure but um but yeah it, it definitely wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be it was much more welcoming much more chilled out than I thought I thought it was gonna be really like, uptight but it wasn't at all and like even just staying in college it was really chilled out so yeah definitely not that stereotype of Oxford or Cambridge that you kind of normally associate it with yeah I feel like there is this sort of as an outsider from Ox Oxbridge in general, like it does, there does seem to be this air of like intimidation and like almost like, like a good word maybe is like superiority and you kind of feel almost like, I don't know, in, in my experience anyway, I felt kind of inferior. Um, and that, it, that just made me feel like, oh, I like I shouldn't be here. Like, you know, this is like not like, this is quite an intimidating place, you know? Um, but as soon as you get there, that look, that whole entire facade is just completely broken down and it's just so so lovely and especially if you see the earth science department like they are so laid back they're such lovely people um so yeah like even though the actual interview might not be like an amazing experience hopefully like the whole interview process should be um a, like a nice experience for you to have i know it definitely was for me and and like you said back it was for you <laughs> Um, so just related to then online interviews for 2020 in particular, um, sort of what advice would you give to students then applying this year about sort of of like how to go about online interviews then as opposed to doing like maybe like a face to face interview? Mm. Well, I guess obviously we don't have that much experience of it other than having like our own university um, online this year. So we've obviously had like tutorials and things online this year um, in terms of like um interviews I guess first of all make sure that you're like happy and comfortable with like how your internet works and like whether you can use whatever platform they're going to use to do the interviews and things like that because I know that's something that would like worry me that if my internet cuts out and things like that so I think first of all if you can remove as many of them sort of anxieties as you can and just make sure that you're doing it on a day when it's going to be quiet and like you're not going to have any like distractions and you're going to have a secure internet connection and things like that that's probably the first thing to think about um, once you've got that sorted and you're down to the actual interview itself, um, obviously it's not going to be like the in-person thing, like you're not going to be able to shake their hand, you're not going to be able to like do all them sort of like um, like polite things at the beginning, but obviously just come in, like um, say hello, smile, like say like, nice to meet you and things like that and um, just do your best I think like hopefully it will all be quite straightforward um and who knows you might feel more comfortable being in your own home it might make it a lot easier so it just depends on what kind of person you are and what you prefer but um I think just try just try your best and obviously if you've been doing things at school like online then you have some experience with that already so yeah again just listen to what they say and try not to like speak over them or anything like that and hopefully it'll be okay 
Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I would echo exactly what you said. Um, just try and relax. Like you said, try and get rid of anything which could cause like a potential anxiety during the interview. Um, be co- get in a comfortable place. Also try and rid yourself of any distractions. So if you've got younger, you know, siblings or like this, or like you've got, you know, a phone near you or something, get rid of the phone, put the phone in a different room. Um, maybe try and ask parents to take the younger siblings out for the time. I think it's only about 40 minutes. So like maybe try and get them to take them out to a park or something like that. Um, but yeah, try and get like a nice quiet um, environment, which is conducive to like a sort of academic environment where you can do your interview. Um, but yeah, definitely everything that you said, Becca, was, was perfect. <laughs> So uh, just to wrap it all up then, um, do you have any like advice or tips for prospective students hoping to apply uh, for earth sciences um, or for just Oxford in general then? Um, I think if you're thinking about applying, um, sort of if you're in sort of the beginning of year 12, like mid year 12, and you're sort of thinking hmm, maybe Oxford or Cambridge might be good for me, then at that point, then you should probably start looking at like what's obviously what subject you want to do. Obviously you probably know that by that point. And then like what reading or like maybe the great thing about well the probably one of the only great things about corona at the moment is the fact that a lot of lectures have been moved online like at different institutions like rather before I think I had to go to London to go to like a half day course on like geophysics or something whereas now that's all been done on, done online so it's much much more accessible so if you want to like boost your personal statement a little bit then have a look online for any online like free lecture courses that are going on and you can put that into your personal statement and again with reading like you can find some books that, find, that you find interesting and um, put them in your personal statement. But obviously, if you're going to put it in your personal statement, make sure you've done it and make sure you understand it and um, that you're not going to lie about it because yeah. they will catch you out if that's the case. Um, and then obviously, just do your best, like use your school if you'd like to boost your personal statement and everything. And then like fingers crossed, you'll get an interview. And then from then on, it's just down to that really. So yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah definitely it's yeah just obviously you know like you said try and do like like a few good super curriculars um as you said there's more accessibility online now that obviously because of coronavirus a lot of things we moved online um so you are doing online courses finding books online um like you said watching online lectures they're all brilliant super curriculars to put into your personal statement um and especially because um i think in earth sciences they use both what subjects you've done and also what you've written in your personal statement as a way to start asking questions so make sure you know like the content that you the content of your personal statement and that you know how to sort of confidently answer answer questions on it and yeah I think just you know be calm be relaxed and remember that Oxford is not the be all and end all don't be don't be you know sad if you don't get an interview Um, equally don't be upset if you don't then get a place after the interview um but yeah just work hard and um, stay positive and yeah you know if you get picked for an interview you should be so proud because um you know not a lot not a lot of people do and it just shows that you really are worthy of being an oxford candidate so yeah my interviews were they were good they were <laughs> one was really bad and then one was better <laughs> but yeah um and that's like yeah but that obviously like yours both yours were good right uh yeah mostly i mean you can't tell afterwards you sort of just yeah. come out you have some sort of wave of disbelief that it even happened so yeah. um no way of telling to be honest but yeah so it's kind of like there's no sort of recipe for what will make the perfect like interview experience because everyone's different everyone you know experiences different feelings everyone gets asked different questions so yeah if someone's being like you should experience this 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 and it's that's not how you, like when you go for your interview that's not how you experience it then just don't worry about it because yeah everyone's different so <laughs> that's all we have time for today we've actually learned some really cool and interesting stuff about interviews for earth sciences thank you becca and <laughs> um, so thank you yeah for sharing your experiences and for joining us at oxford from the inside <laughs> also thank you to our followers for listening to this podcast or for watching this video and also to remember to follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at Oxford from the inside, no spaces or lowercase. And also check out our Facebook page and LinkedIn and Twitter for regular updates on our new content. And also just to access our stuff, just type in Oxford from the inside on you know, Spotify, YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts. Think we're on Google Podcasts. <laughs> 
anyway lots of podcasting platforms um you know type it in you name it we're on it um and yeah i hope you all stay safe and well and until next time bye